Wow, what an honor to get the opportunity to share a little bit on my heart today. Um, I was praying about this, the the status right now in, in, in America and in Canada and Australia and a lot of these nations that are experiencing uh, these, these lockdown, these mandates, just the intensity of the hour that we live in. And the Lord really brought me to John chapter 20. And I want to read this story uh, that really has changed my life and really helped bring, uh, I, I guess it's helped bring a model uh, in a sense of, of what we're called to be and who we are in this season. In John chapter 20, um, this is one of those moments where Jesus is reappearing to his disciples. And uh, the thing you love about Jesus is he's actually kind of random. Like he never does what you think he's going to do. Like, you know, they, they're looking for him in the, re- the re- return of Jesus and the resurrection and all of a sudden he he shows up as a gardener, you know, nobody really recognizes who he is. And then the next moment he's sitting on the beach cooking fish, you know, and the disciples, it takes them a minute to realize it's Jesus, you know, the resurrected son of God. But I love this in John chapter 20, because I feel like this was really the church in 2020 in many ways. And you, let's pick it up here in John chapter 20, verse 19. It says on the evening of that first day of the week when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them. And I just love this thought that it's just wild. You know, the, the future of the new Testament church on the earth, like the, the, the hope of the entire church is together in one room in the dark with the doors locked and 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 you know you, you got to imagine i mean jesus is not thinking this is what he's going to return to he spent three years investing into these guys he's they've seen miracles they've seen signs and wonders they've seen you know the the lame uh, walk they've seen this the sick healed they've seen you know the uh the you know, the, the bread and fish multiplied, you would, you would think that they would be pretty, like he would return to a celebratory welcome party, you know, but instead here, all of the disciples are locked with the doors where fear the Jewish leaders hiding. And, you know, that brings me a lot of hope (laughs) because I didn't spend three years walking and talking with Jesus. I didn't see the miracles. And so anytime I face fear or intimidation, I think about this story. And it says that Jesus came and he stood among them and he said to them, peace be with you. Peace be with you. He spoke immediately into their place of fear, immediately into their place of pain. And he brought peace. And he said this, After this, he showed them his hands and he showed them his side. It says the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Immediately, the atmosphere shifted from one of fear and one of trauma and one of intimidation to one of peace and one of joy. And the the amazing thing about this moment is, is that Jesus would have had every right to come in and rebuke them. He would have every right to come in and say, you weak, pathetic disciples, I poured my guts into you, and here you are, you're hiding. But no, Jesus is not like us. Jesus is not like the trolls on Facebook, you know. Jesus is full of kindness. He's full of compassion. He's full of empathy, and he steps into their place of pain and brings peace without bringing, you know, this shame, without bringing this, well, you should have done this and you should have done this. He comes in to bring pain and, and read this. It says in verse 20, after, after this, he showed them his hands, his side, they were overjoyed. And it says, verse 21, then again, Jesus said, peace be with you as the father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. We have four verses. This is four verses in John chapter 20, where a room full of scaredy cat, fearful, hopeless leaders are moved into power and fire and love to take the world. It was an encounter that lasted four verses. That's all it took. They didn't go through, you know, therapy. They didn't go through, and I don't think all those things are bad, but 
one moment with Jesus can dispel every amount of fear in your life. One encounter with his presence can shift you from a person of fear to a person of faith. And so that's what we see right here. We see this moment where, and, and if you read on uh, past this in, in, in the book of John and then even into, you know, the, the, in, into the book of Acts, they're transformed from this moment forever forward. And I feel like in 2020, like the amount of fear the amount of intimidation, the amount of stuff that we encountered, it left a lot of us hiding in a dark room. It left a lot of us in, in pain. It left a lot of us in trauma. It left a lot of us in worry. It left a lot of us in doubt. And I feel like this is a season, my friends, all over the world where God is stepping into your dark room. I even feel it right now all over the world. God is stepping into your dark room and he's not coming to bring shame He's not coming to, to, to condemn you. He's not coming to tell you, you know, how you failed miserably. He's not coming to, 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 to bring you this, this, this condemnation for your addictions that you grabbed onto that you know you shouldn't have grabbed onto or the fear that became your friend that shouldn't have. No, he's coming in the midst of it to bring you peace. He's coming in the midst of it to bring you joy and to remind you of the mandate you're truly called to. And I feel even right now, there is a moment for us to go through a mass deliverance. I mean, it can happen right now. It can happen right now. We have seen it in 138 cities across America. There is not a city that's too hard. There is not a place that's too dark. There is not a, a, a piece of real estate in this nation that is too difficult for the power and the love of Jesus. I feel like right now in this moment that God wants to bring an encounter to every person watching, an encounter that's going to break off your fear, an encounter that's going to break off your doubt, an encounter that's going to remind you who he's truly called you to be. We can't live our lives in dark rooms. It's time to turn the light on. It's time to, to step out. It's time to be the church. It's time to step into the fullness of our calling. The enemy, I really believe this. I've been saying this across America. I feel like he's overplayed his hand. I know in our life, you know, he, he tried so hard to bring discouragement and intimidation. And 2020 was a year where so many of us battled not only the pandemic, but business, losing business. And, you know, our kids weren't able to go to school. And it was just one disappointment after another disappointment. And pretty soon you don't even realize it. And you're covered in doubt and disappointment. And that becomes the lens on which you view the world. And I believe this is a season where God's saying, no. You are mighty. You are a mighty man. You are a mighty woman of God. I mean, think about this. All it took was an, one encounter for Jesus to unlock the destiny of the church. Had he not stepped into that room, who knows where the global church would have been. But he knew all it took was one encounter. It says he stood among them and he said, peace be with you. I want to declare something over you today, over your home over your family, over your city, over your job. I want to declare peace be to you. I want to declare, as Jesus said, he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. It's amazing what can happen as the power of the Holy Spirit is released. As the power of the Holy Spirit is released on our lives, it incinerates all the doubt, it incinerates all the fear, it incinerates all of the worry and all the anxiety. I feel like even right now, I, 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 you know, as I'm speaking this, I just see clouds of oppression lifting. I see clouds of heaviness. Some of you are addicted to prescription drugs. Some of you have contemplated suicide, and this is your moment of freedom. This is your moment where Jesus is walking in and he's not walking in to make you feel bad. He's not walking in to, to make you, to remind you what a failure you were in the last season. No, he's stepping in to free you. He's got plans. He's got promises. He's got dreams. He's got hopes for you. And he's not done yet. He's not finished yet. With that, he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. I was so moved 
We were in a town in Colorado last week, and this was a town that has experienced untold amounts of suicide and heaviness and oppression. And the leaders of that town invited us to come and just said, can, can we just worship? Can we just see what God can do to bring breakthrough? And we began to worship and it's amazing how, you know, it says that he's the glory and the lifter of our head. You know, it says that he, he trades the beauty for ashes, the joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of despair. Can I tell you, we've gone through a spirit, a season of despair and hopelessness. It's time for us to put on the garment of praise. I'm, I'm talking wild, outrageous praise. Like, and the Lord's been, he's been working on me too. You know, the other day I was stuck in traffic and, and, and he was like, you need to worship me. And I'm like, yeah, I, I will. I, you know, I'm in traffic. I put worship music on. I was kind of like this. He's like, no, no, no. Outrageous praise. Praise that brings the breakthrough like you do on stages, but just do it in your car. And so pretty soon I was had my hands up and I was shouting and I was punching the air and I was worshiping and I had my eyes closed and then the light turned green and I, everyone was honking at me. But I had a moment of breakthrough in my car that day. And I feel like that is a, that is a, that is a tool that we have to use worship as our weapon in this season to break off the heaviness all around us, the heaviness of the media, the heaviness of, uh, of, of our, of our situations that we're in. And so I want to pray and I want to declare over you that this is a season of the garment of praise. This is a season where you're going to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that's going to break off the fear that's been tormenting you. This is not a season of retreat. This is a season of advancing. This is not a season of hiding in fear. This is a season of taking ground in the Spirit. And you're coming out of the dark room. You're stepping out of your place where you were locked down. Some of you actually really, this is physically, you've been locked down. I feel like it's time for you to break out of that. And so I want to invite my friend Marcus to come. We're going to be, we're going to pray over you right now that God would break through in every situation across the world. Sean, I sense the presence of the Lord here, and I love how you have brought hope to people. And if you have a need today and you want this man of God to pray for you, get on the phone or get online and say, this is my need or this is my loved one's need, my son, my daughter, that hell has tried to destroy, that the devil has tried to, to bring them down. God can intervene today. He really, really will. So while people are calling, let's put up the information about Miami, New Year's Eve, and give everybody an invitation. We want everybody to join us in Miami. I am telling you, it is going to be the worship party of 2021. I like that. There's nothing like worshiping from the from the last season yeah. into the next season. Oh, so There's good. something powerful about that. So join All right. us. Well, if you're in the greater Miami area, write that information down. Go to uh, Let us the worship. website. US. Yeah, that's real easy to remember. Let us worship. Dot us and Sean, would you just begin to pray over all these prayer needs today? Yes, Lord, we just thank you, God, right now that there thank is you, no Father. distance Hallelujah. in the Spirit. We believe, yes, God, over so every Lord. one of these requests, God, for dynamic God, breakthrough in this season, God, that you would invade every area of need, God, that you would show up, God, and you would bring miraculous signs and wonders, deliverance, freedom. We pray the garment of praise you, for Father, the spirit God. of heaviness. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, for every single one of thank these you, needs, Father, God, God, that you would meet them according Lord. to your riches Minister and glory. Five. We Minister pray for our Healy. friends all Minister over Minister the earth, God, not just in America, but in all over the, the earth, God, that you would show up in yes. this season for such a time as this. Step into in the dark the room name of Jesus. and bring the Holy Spirit. Well, we love you. We'll see you again right here on Daystar.